The four elemental planes are known to just about everyone, but what many do not know is what lies between them. Welcome to Monster of the Week! This week we're going to be examining beings from the space between spaces. We are of course talking about para-elementals. Para-elementals have been in several different versions of D&D since the beginning, but the most recent version can be found in the 3rd edition Manual of the Planes. Today we're going to talk about what they are, why they are, some ideas to make them unique, and of course how to use them in your game. Now before I get ahead of myself, let's talk about what a para-elemental actually is. You're probably already familiar with the four elemental planes and the beings that live there, but for those of you who aren't, you've got your fire elementals, from the plane of fire, your water elementals, from the plane of water, your earth elementals from the plane of earth, and your air elementals from the plane of uh, air. Now all of these planes are pretty far removed from the material plane, but they do exist in an actual space, and they do intercept at some point. Where and what that looks like exactly is totally up to you as a DM, but it's at these locations of interception between the planes that you will find para-elementals. Para-elementals are essentially hybrids of two different kinds of elemental energy. They are the result of these two elemental energies crashing together and mixing into one. The border between the planes of fire and earth will spawn magma elementals. Between earth and water, you get ooze elementals. Between water and air, you'll find ice elementals. And lastly, between air and fire, you'll find smoke elementals. Not having a place to truly call their own, they fight rigorously against forces coming from both sides just for the right to survive. It is this resilience that causes them to spawn even more of their kind as the elements crash onto one another. Para-elementals, though much lower in population when compared to the standard elementals, have inherited the best of both worlds from their two respective planes. The combination of these two elements have made them very strong in their own unique way, and it's because of this that they've continued to live. So now that you've got a basic idea of what we're talking about, let's go over each type of elemental and see what they can do. Born in the heart of extraplanar volcanoes, first up, we've got the magma elementals. They are truly the embodiment of their home. Their core is mostly made up of slag where the lava has somewhat solidified, while the parts of their body that move the most, like their hands and feet, are constantly in a molten state. Like earth elementals, they can appear calm and stoic at times, but like fire elementals, they have the tendency to erupt into violence at a moment's notice. You could say that they're fairly hot-headed. You could. I probably wouldn't say that. In combat, the magma elemental relies heavily on its massive form and pure strength. Much like the fire elemental, any creature that tries to hit it or is hit by it has a chance to catch fire. However, unlike the fire elemental, a magma elemental has a very strong and sturdy form, meaning that it can attempt to grapple its targets and crush them, all the while inflicting burn damage. Magma elementals essentially get the raw power and strength of an earth elemental combined with the raw damage and power of a fire elemental. In 5th edition, I would also consider giving the magma elemental the siege monster trait that normally belongs to the earth elemental, and the illumination trait belongs to the fire elemental. It seems logical, but it also adds a little bit more flavor to what should be a rare and memorable encounter. On the other side of the earthen plane, between the planes of earth and water, we have the ooze elementals. Ooze elementals combine the resilience of stone with the swift movement of water, and they add something of their own. To anyone familiar with how regular oozes work in D&D, it should come to no surprise that these guys are extremely acidic. Any creature who strikes an ooze elemental has to be very careful, otherwise their equipment could end up disintegrated. And should one of these things manage to grapple a creature, I think you can figure out what happens. The ooze elemental is essentially a sentient and somewhat intelligent ooze. This is really terrifying because what makes oozes at least manageable is the fact that they act on pure instinct alone and don't have a mind essentially. The ooze elemental is an ooze that can think and strategize to some extent at least. At the very least it will know which targets to prioritize and whose gear needs to be destroyed first. And that can be very punishing for players who go into a fight half cocked. So next up we have the ice elementals. Standing as a frozen monolith, the ice elemental is driven primarily by the urge to coat things in ice. Finding that neither the plane of air nor the plane of water are cold enough, they are the most constructive para-elementals, attempting to carve out their own frozen home amongst the planes. Ice elementals value patience in battle. They will often stand waiting for their foes to come to them, and then strike at the most advantageous moment. They also possess an ability that can be detrimental to the success of some groups, especially the more melee-oriented players. They can cast Chill Metal, which reads like the spell of the same name, except it affects a 20-foot radius around the creature instead of just one target. The Ice Elemental will try to hit as many of its foes at once with this ability as it can, 
and then simply outlast them. The Ice Elemental is a great obstacle for groups that love smash and grab tactics. It rewards patience and caution just as much as it punishes rash and hasty decisions. So last, but certainly not least, we have my personal favorite, the Smoke Elementals. Smoke Elementals exist between the planes of fire and air. They seek to unify these two elements whenever possible, and more than any of the other para elementals, they thrive. They appear as a jet black column of smoke with red hot cinders for eyes. And unlike every one of the other elementals, para elemental or otherwise, they don't have slam attacks, they have two grotesque hooks for arms. They are extremely fast in the air, and they use their unmatched speed to run circles around their land based foes. When it sees an opening, it will dive in and thrash at its foe with its claws. In addition to raw speed, however, the smoke elemental has one really nasty trick up its sleeve. The Smoke Elemental has this ability, which allows it to engulf a creature equal or smaller to it in size in a cloud of smoke, basically made up of its body. The creature then has to make a constitution save. On a failed save, part of the elemental is actually breathed in by the creature. This part of the smoke elemental, now inside the creature, solidifies into claws or talons that shred at the internal organs of the one who ingested it. This attack automatically hits and deals double damage to the creature no matter what. The afflicted creature can continue to make constitution saves each round to try and cough up the menace. However, due to the nature of smoke elementals, they won't have much time to do so. Another thing worth mentioning is that if you throw a smoke elemental at a party in total darkness, it's going to be very hard for them to see what's actually happening. But it could be a very dramatic moment to reveal this creature lurking in the shadows with two red embers for eyes. There are so many ways to use para elementals in your games, the most obvious of which being a random encounter. And as a random encounter, they'll probably leave your players with more questions than answers. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. If you happen to be running a game that is very involved with the elemental planes, Para Elementals can be a great way of flushing that out. Given the Para Elementals status as underdogs throughout the planes, you could very easily set up a group of Para Elementals as victims in a situation where the two planes on either side of them are threatening their very existence. On the flip side, you could always have a group of Para Elementals or groups of Para Elementals start to rise up and threaten the balance of the other four major elemental planes. Which, of course, would ultimately spell disaster for the world and everything as the players know it. Granted, both of these scenarios involve a very specific game setting. And if that's not what you're going for, it could be pretty hard to shoehorn them in outside of a random encounter. However, I do think para elementals can be used as a tool to exemplify the power of a spellcaster. For instance, if you have a villain in your game who's a wizard and you want to give him a unique trait, maybe he's using arcana to combine two different elements elementals into para-elementals. You could describe him summoning an earth elemental and then a fire elemental, and using some kind of mad scientist-esque magic to combine them into one. Not only will this give you an excuse to have para-elementals in your game, but it will definitely convey the message to your players that this guy is powerful enough to have figured something out that no one has figured out before. You could even set this up as giving your players a plot hook about a rumor of some bizarre creature spotted roaming throughout the streets at night that turns out to be a smoke elemental. Or maybe a passing traveler tells tells the players the tale of his encounter with some mud monster that turns out to be an ooze elemental. Ultimately what makes para elementals so interesting is their weirdness and unfamiliarity that your players will have. Most people will know enough about elementals to understand what they are, but often have to consider what could happen if two different elemental energies were to combine. So that's all for this week. Hopefully you can find a use for these planar denizens, and hopefully you enjoyed learning about them. If you've got any plans to use para elementals in your game, I'd love to hear about them in the comments. And as always, thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it, and I'll see you next time.